Today, we're looking at how the gorgeous Bernese Mountain Dog stands up next to the wildly popular Labrador. They have vastly different histories, but have been and currently are working dogs that are valued family companions. So which one might be best for you? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna find out in today's video. Welcome back to the Femria Bernie's Mountain Dog Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the incredible Bernie's Mountain Dog, then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect Bernie's Mountain Dog companions. So if you're a lifelong Bernie's Mountain Dog lover or thinking about getting your first one, I promise you this is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a few future Bernie's Mountain Dog video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll see if these two apparently distant breeds are really all that different after all. And as always, we're going to start with their history because we can't know where we're going until we know where we've been. The Bernese Mountain Dog was originally bred and used as both a drover and a drafting dog, meaning that they helped herd dairy cows to markets and pulled small carts around the Swiss countryside. With the Industrial Revolution and the convenience of trains, the Bernese Mountain Dog found itself out of a job and the breed became extremely close to extinction. Now, thankfully, the dying breed was resurrected in the early 1900s and has made quite the comeback as a beautiful family companion. Now, the Labrador Retriever is a breed that was thoughtfully developed in the late 1800s, though they had been hunter's companions long before that. The lab was bred and built to retrieve waterfowl shot down by hunters in what we know today as the Labrador, Retreat, the Labrador region of Canada. The breed came to Britain where it was further refined to become a breed distinct from other similar dogs from that region. Sorry to very quickly interrupt the video guys, I just wanted to let you know if you haven't done it already, over on our website FenrirCanineLeaders.com we have a completely free quiz that I designed myself for you to be able to take. It asks you a few questions based on some of the things I think are really important for what guard dog breed will be perfect for you. So you go through that quiz, you answer the questions honestly and then at the end it will give you what I think the perfect guard dog breed for you is. And again, it's completely free, just trying to help you guys out as much as we can so again there'll be a link down to it in the description box below if you haven't done it already go even if you're not necessarily interested in getting a guard dog breed anytime soon i know a lot of people have found it really fun just to see what kind of breed i would recommend for you so get stuck in go and have a look but without further ado we'll get back to the video you were just watching so then what about some of the obvious differences in terms of their looks well these two breeds are both strikingly beautiful but in very different ways the bernese mountain dog ranging from seven to 115 pounds is generally tri-coloured, meaning they have a predominantly black coat coat with tan and white markings. Their double coat is thick and the outer fur is long and silky with some feathering around the chest and haunches. They were bred to work in the mountains of Switzerland, so they do well in cooler to cold climates over hot ones. Now, the Labrador, on the other hand, has a short but still thick double coat and water-repellent outer coat and weighs around 55 to 80 pounds. They come in solid colours of yellow, chocolate and black, with some people starting to have red fox as its own distinct colouring. They have a much more lean body than the Bernese Mountain Dog, but shed just as much. They have a slight web in between their toes to aid in swimming and are known for having a very soft mouth that don't damage the body of the game as they go out and retrieve it. So then let's look at the temperament differences of these two breeds. And the temperament of these two breeds are quite different, although they are both a joy to have in the home. The Bernese Mountain Dog is a steadfast and quiet companion that is very loving and affectionate with all of their family. They tend to be watchful or aloof with strangers at first and can be imposing due to their size and deep bark. Now, the Labrador is much higher energy companion, but equally loving and loyal with their family, particularly with the person who works with them the most. They are devoted companions who are always looking to please their leader and get that cuddle that they're desperate for. The Lab is extremely friendly, even with strangers, and sports that kind of happy-go-lucky 24-7 attitude. 
Now that takes me on to one of my favorite things and that's about the trainability and intelligence. And you'll find both breeds are very easy to train and willing to please their leaders. The Bernese has a soft personality and only moderate energy. So don't expect them to be willing or able to achieve high levels of athletic prowess. Because of their size and general health, they might not be best for first time owners, but the Bernese Mountain Dog is a mellow large breed, ideal for those who are looking to have a large breed potentially for the first time. Now the lab is quite different here and is extremely intelligent with the energy and drive to learn complex exercises and take on critical roles like scent detection for police and military organisations. Labs are frequently used in search and rescue, drug and bomb detection and service roles for people with a wide amount of disabilities. So then what about the energy differences? Now we know that the Bernese Mountain Dog isn't likely to excel in competition or high, energy, high level work because they just don't have the natural drive for it. They do have the energy to move around all day and are considered to be a medium energy breed while the lab is considered to be a very high energy breed. If you want to go for long hikes, walks or runs then the lab has the energy to keep up and then some. They need plenty of physical and mental exercise every single day to prevent destructive behaviours, which are one of the most common things seen with the Labrador in terms of negatives. Now then, let's talk about the overall health differences. And since the Bernese Mountain Dog is a large breed, they have a, a shorter lifespan of around 10 years or so. But because the breed was so close to extinction only a little over 100 years ago, the genetic pool is still pretty small. This means they are prone to a wide variety of health issues like cancers, blood disorders, heart problems, and these are all made worse by their potential for obesity. The Labrador is generally healthy and lives a bit longer, about 12 to 14 years. They are similarly prone to obesity once they reach maturity and can have issues with hip, with hip and elbow dysplasia, as well as a few types of cancers and different blood disorders. So I hope you enjoyed that quick overview of these two incredible, glorious dog breeds. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. And remember, if you're new, to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. We've got two new Bernese Mountain Dog videos coming to this channel every single week. And I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Bernese Mountain Dog Show.